So in this Power World video, I bring you a guide on how to breed the best combat Anubis this game can offer. This Anubis alone is capable of crazy things and well in my opinion is one everyone should have in their life. We all know Anubis can be one of the best base power works in the game, but with this setup of passives, I will guide you to getting, he's also a monster in that combat too. I actually went into the creation of this video, into the creation of this power thinking about PvP and the future, especially in that combat arena, that power combat arena. This Anubis were absolutely slay, and it was with this intention I decided to create what in my opinion is one of the best combat Anubises this game can offer. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and before we go any further I am giving away a couple of copies of this game or any game of your choice. To be with a chance of winning simply drop a like on this video, leave a comment down below and make sure you are subbed with those notifications turned on. Winners will be picked and announced at the end of the week so good luck everybody. So this combat Anubis I've been trying to breed for a while now. Many many cakes and many hours later I bring you the best way in my opinion to get this variant of Anubis. One that will absolutely be deadly in that PvP when it eventually does come in. Now I understand with PvP is team based and the better team will win for sure. But having powers with uh, the ultimate passives for the ultimate DPS in said teams will be a massive benefit especially within that PAL PvP arena. End game combat passives you want on your PAL, in my opinion, the best four you can get for that attack power, especially on Anubis, are as follows. Muscle Head, which gives you a 30% increase to attack power. Yes, it takes away from that work speed, that, but that isn't what we want or care about here with a combat PAL. We also want Ferocious, which gives you a further 20% attack damage. We want Legend, which gives you a 20% increase to that attack damage and that defense, as well as a 15% increase to movement speed. And lastly, guys, we want the Earth Emperor, which gives you a further 20% increase to that Earth attack damage. Perfect for Anubis. So these are the four passives we will ultimately end up with on our Anubis today. So where do we start? So there were a few different ways to actually achieve this, but after catching and breeding and doing all this stuff for days now, I will give you what in my opinion is definitely the quickest route in achieving this. So firstly, we need to catch ourselves pals, which can end up with the two passives, which we will then push forward and breed with a legendary power to guarantee us that Anubis baby. Those two passives we need are muscle head as well as ferocious. Now these ain't exclusive passives to any individual pal, but in regards to breeding up to get to that Anubis the quickest way possible, if I were you, I'd recommend you definitely going out looking for a breeding pair of Dire Halves. With these two, you need two passives to look out for. You need one with that Muscle Head and one with that Ferocious on it. These are the two main passives we are after here. Now you can be extremely lucky and catch a single Dire Howl who may have both of these on it. I mean, if luck is on your side, that is. For me, it wasn't that straightforward. I actually took the longer route as I was wasting cakes just brooding random passive roll die howls, wasting time. Now die howls can be found around numerous parts of the map and they average spawn at around a level 14 and below. But yes, get yourself two die howls, a male and female. Again guys, between this brooding pair of die howls, we need the two passives of Morsa Head and Ferocious. Preferably without any other passives on said die howls too. If they both come with one passive each, that is absolutely perfect. But I mean, if they do have something else random on them, I mean, it isn't that bad because when it comes to passives passing down, uh, they ain't singled out. And with the countless times that I have bred myself, it's just a good chance you end up with just the two you want or even two random passives at the same time. But if you have one parent with one passive and the other parent with the other passive, this in my opinion is probably the best way of going about this. I actually bred a Dire Howl which had Ferocious on it. I had another Dire Howl which had Muscle Head on it, but it had two other passives. One of the first five uh, Dire Howl babies I got from breeding these two had the perfect two passives I needed of Ferocious and Muscle Head on it. So like I said, as long as the parents have both uh, the Muscle Head and Ferocious between them, I'll just breed these two until you get what you need. But either or guys, the result we want here is a single Dire Howl, which has only two passives that we want on it. And those are again, Muscle Head and Ferocious. We don't want any other passives on said final Dire Howl. Then guys, you want to breed this Dire Howl with Jet Dragon. 
Jet Dragon being a legendary power has that legend passive on it we want. So Jet Dragon is obviously a level 50 world boss who isn't the easiest of catches, but you can hear guys use Palladius or Necromus too. These are other level 50 legendary world bosses. Breeding either Jet Dragon, Palladius or Necromus with Dire Howl will give you the same results of an Anubis baby. So whichever world boss you find easier to catch, do what you gotta do there. Now there are other routes you can take to breed other powers, which we'll talk about in a quick minute. But yeah, right now you want to breed that Dire Howl with that legendary pal. I'm using here Jet Dragon. So breeding Dire Howl and Jet Dragon guarantees me an Anubis baby. And what we are looking for here guys is, is one Anubis baby with three of the passives we want and they are Legend, Musclehead and Ferocious. These are the only three passives you want on that Anubis baby. And yes this could take you a few attempts just because uh, Jet Dragon normally has a couple of other passives on him too. So yeah, keep going guys until you get just these three unsaid Anubis. You want Ferocious, Musclehead and Legend, that is the end goal. Okay, so once you have this guys, there's only one more thing required and that is you go out and catch the world boss Alpha Anubis who spawns in at level 47. This is the only way as far as I'm aware that you can get the Earth Emperor passive skill. You need to go out and catch this Alpha boss Anubis again at level 47. So once you have this Alpha Anubis, you then guys just simply breed it with the Anubis we made earlier from Jet Dragon and the Dire Howl. And your end goal is guys that you want obviously an Anubis baby which has the muscle head, the ferocious, the legend and the earth emperor as its four passives. That is the end goal, that is what you want and that is what we strive to achieve here. And that is guys as simple as it gets. Now alternatively if you have no luck with Dire Howls or Jet Dragon you can get two Gobfins with Musclehead and Ferocious as a mating pair and then go ahead and breed these with Necromus, the legendary pal. This will also guarantee you an Anubis baby. The same route obviously can be used here. Alternatively if you struggle with Jet Dragon or don't have him, Dire Howl can also be bred with Palladius and Necromus. As I said earlier this will still guarantee you an Anubis baby. Now the other legendary alpha world boss is Frost Stallion. Now you can result in an Anubis baby from Frost Stallion, but it requires you to breed said Frost Stallion with either Robin Quill, Goriath or Gale Claw. This would mean you'd obviously need a breeding pair of said pals with both Musclehead and Ferocious on them before you start the breeding with Frost Stallion. But once that's achieved on your mating pair guys, go ahead and breed with Frost Stallion. This guarantees you an Anubis baby and from here guys, you go ahead and breed that Anubis baby with said Alpha World Boss Anubis and eventually guys, the outcome will be the same of you having the perfect Anubis with that Musclehead Ferocious Legend as well as the Earth Emperor. That is what we want here. So all in all guys, you will end up one of the best Anubises in the game, especially for that combat. But it actually doesn't end there in regards to damage output with Anubis here. You can buff it even further. You can get even more damage by stacking new mods in your party too. These will increase damage to that ground type powers. Perfect for Anubis. Now obviously you want to be leveling up your Anubis via the condensation machine too and using the statue of power once you have that perfect power, that perfect Anubis. I don't feel like I need to be telling people this, but yes, this definitely should be the case. You'll make him as powerful as possible. Now, I also realize people will mention IVs, which I understand, but in my opinion, these can be so damn random. I just wait until you've achieved the perfect Anubis or even power that you're chasing. Then try and breed the opposite sex with the exact same passives. I mean, because yeah, and then just breed away from there. On PC, IVs can be calculated easy with mods. You can even put mods in your game that show you them in game. On console, that is not the case. Plus, in my opinion, the difference between high IVs and low ones are pretty minor though. So they ain't really worth too much of your time worrying about right now. Just get that perfect pal first. And again, like I said, try and breed the opposite sex with the exact same passive role. But there we have it guys, a complete guide on how you get the best combat Anubis in this game. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.